Hi everybody, good evening and welcome to today's masterclass with London Mines and Seedlet Drinks. My name's Ed, I work as the UK brand ambassador for Seedlet and Acorn uh, and today I'm going to take you through this non-alcoholic cocktail masterclass uh, and give you guys a few tips and tricks and recipes to make some delicious non-alcoholic cocktails at home. Uh, so first of all, by way of introduction, we have here on my left uh, Seedlip, which is what we're going to be using as the base for a few of our cocktails. Now, Seedlip is on a mission. We are here to change the way the world drinks, and we're changing the way the world drinks by working with the natural world to create delicious non-alcoholic spirits to solve the dilemma of what to drink when you're not drinking. Happens to all of us from time to time, right? Well, we are here for what to drink when you're not drinking. And on my right hand side, we have Acorn here, who is also helping to change the way the world drinks by providing delicious non-alcoholic aperitifs. What is an aperitif, you might ask? Well, it's a good question. An aperitif is the classic kind of um, sociable drink. It's usually a bitter cocktail. It plays a function. You have it before a dinner. It acts to sort of awaken the appetite, get the juices flowing before a big dinner. Traditionally, they're always bitter in flavour. Uh, and until now, they were usually alcoholic. Uh, but Acorn is here uh, to give you the option to drink, to, to enjoy aperitifs, whether you're drinking or not. So we're here as the uh, UK's first range of non-alcoholic aperitifs. And later on, we're going to show you just how together Seedlip and Acorn can, can combine and make some really, truly delicious non-alcoholic cocktails. Um, so I think without further ado, we'll get into the first drink because you're probably thirsty. I'm quite thirsty. Um, so if you're playing along at home, fantastic. Uh, if not, not to fear, we'll uh, send you all the recipes afterwards so you can use them in the future. Um, go out and get yourself some Seedlip and Acorn and, and make the cocktails yourself. Um, but you're going to need a few things if you are playing along at home. First thing is obviously some Seedlip and some Acorn. Now today I'm going to be using Seedlip Spice 94, which is our original Seedlip, the first Seedlip that we launched. Very aromatic, kind of got woody, uh, earthy notes in there, quite, quite warming and comforting. It's got the allspice berry as the hero ingredient. So that allspice berry is in there, is aptly named because it tastes like all of the spices. So you've got flavours of clove and cinnamon and all those beautiful spices in there. And it's uh, complemented by cardamom, so a nice kind of savoury spice, lemon and grapefruit to give it lightness and freshness and zest, and then cascadilla bark, which is kind of like a vanilla uh, to give it that kind of earthy, woody um, flavour, and then American oak for backbone and structure. I'm also going to be using acorn bitter, uh, which as the name suggests, bracingly bitter. Uh, it's got a wonderful ingredient as its kind of centre to give it that bitter flavour called quassia bark which is a really interesting ingredient because despite the intensity of its flavour, it's a non-fatiguing bitterness, which means that it doesn't wear out your palate, which is great news because it means that acorn bitter can be enjoyed endlessly. It's really sessionable. Uh, it's also got lots of citrus in there to balance with the bitterness. So think uh, quinotto, grapefruit, bay leaf in there as well for a bit of kind of savoury bitterness, uh, and then sancho pepper for a bit of warmth and a bit of a, a, bit of a kick. Um, acorn is, is, a, is a wonderful uh, ingredient, uh, drink that uses verju as the base. So verju, uh, we would call it green juice if we were literally translating. It's the juice of, in our case, English sparkling wine grapes that is pressed before the grapes have matured uh, and have ripened to kind of uh, hold the sugar that would eventually become alcohol. So what that does is when we get that liquid, it's non-alcoholic, but it has the properties of wine. So it kind of plays and behaves like a wine. So it gives you grip on the mouth, uh, gives you great mouthfeel, depth, complexity, uh, and also brightness of flavour. So that's then aromatised with our bitter herbs and botanicals, including, of course, the eponymous acorn, which is in their botanic structure, and depth and bitterness. And I'm also going to be using acorn aromatic in one of the cocktails later on. So aromatic is really rich, velvety smooth on the, on the palate, uh, really inviting on the nose and on the, on the taste. Uh, it's got vanilla uh, and cinnamon in there, as well as gentian to give it a really beautiful kind of herbaceous aromatic run throughout. Um, and then I'm going to be using a few tools as well, um, but if you don't have all the tools on hand, don't worry, I'm sure there's a way that we can uh, work around that. Um, I am going to be using for one of the cocktails a cocktail shaker, so a two-part cocktail shaker. Um, if you don't have a cocktail shaker and you've survived somehow a year of these uh, uh, Zoom masterclasses without treating yourself to a shaker, don't worry. Um, you can use anything that seals nice and tight, for example a jam jar with a nice tight lid, um, you can use uh, one of the containers from a, a Nutribullet, uh, which has got a nice tight lid on. You can even use uh, a keep cup, as long as you keep it nice and tight, give it a good hard shake. Um, I'm going to be using some strainers as well, um, which again, you might have a strainer to hand, you might have a sieve to hand. Anything that can just hold the, the ice back as we're pouring the, the drink in. 
I'm going to be using a bar spoon. So if you don't have a bar spoon that's quite this long, um, you can replace it with just a, a teaspoon or even a tablespoon will do. Anything that you can stir it around, around with, even use a finger, I'm not going to tell anyone. Um, and then when it comes to glassware, I'm going to be using um, a few different glasses. I've got a highball or just anything with kind of nice straight edges. Um, I've got a, um, a martini glass for the martinis that we're going to be making. Anything really with stemware so, so you can hold it like this um, and pour it in. Uh, and I'm going to be using a rocks glass, uh, which is again just a kind of shorter version of the highball. Anything with nice straight edges. Uh, and I'm just going to jump over to grab my wine glass. which I have here. Uh, so we're gonna be using a wine glass as well for one of the drinks, but again, something nice and big with that stem uh, to hold it on uh, would be perfect. Cool, um, and one of the more important ingredients I'm gonna be using is ice. So we're gonna need lots and lots of ice to keep our drinks nice and cold. Um, and then for the mixers, I've got a tonic water and a soda water. Mine's a flavored soda water, but if you have just normal sparkling water, that will do. And then something sweet as well. So you can make a sugar syrup if you like, you can use honey, you can use maple syrup. I've gone for agave syrup. I just really love the kind of rich flavor that it comes, that, that you get from it. Um, and then coffee as well. It's a bit of a clue to a cocktail that's gonna be coming later on. Some uh, nice uh, freshly brewed espresso, uh, which is gonna be coming in. And last but not least, probably, well, one of the most important tools when you're making cocktails is the jigger. So my jigger uh, has two sides to it. One side is a 50 milliliter measure. The other side is a 25 milliliter measure or a single and a double. You might not have a jigger with those exact proportions, but again, not to fear. There's plenty of things that we can use instead around the house. For example, an egg cup. Uh, egg cups are usually, by chance, about 50 milliliters in capacity. Um, or you can use an espresso cup if you have one. But the most important thing is, is that you're consistent with your, your sizes. So if you have an egg cup and God, you don't know whether it's 50 or 100 milliliters or you know anything else in between. If I'm, if I'm using 50 milliliters, you use the whole of the egg cup and then you can work out the proportions afterwards. The measurements themselves are not necessarily the most important thing. It's all about the proportions. So as long as we have the proportions uniform, you should be fine. Okay, great. Well, that was quite a lot of talking. Uh, I'm even more thirsty now than the last time I said. So without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. We're going to make our first cocktail. And our first cocktail today is going to be the seedlet and tonic. Super simple, super delicious. It is definitely the best way to try seedlet if you're completely new uh, to non-alcoholic spirits and you're new to seedlet. Uh, it really is a, a perfect blend, uh, a perfect way to enjoy all the flavours and also it's kind of got a familiarity to it, right? It's a familiar ceremony, a familiar serve style, um, some, nothing too kind of out there uh, just to start off with, with seedlip. But as I said, we're going to be using seedlip spice 94 and a highball for this. So again, a nice kind of uh, straight sided glass, uh, you don't have exactly a highball. And we're going to be using our jigger and we're using 50 millilitres, so a nice big double measure. So that's 50 milliliters of Seedlip Spice 94 going in there. There we go, lovely. And now you want to top it up with lots and lots of ice. You want to use uh, as much ice as possible, as much ice as will fit in the glass. It's, uh, it's an urban legend that the more ice uh, you get in a drink, the, the, the more you're being cheated. Um, in fact, the opposite is true. You want to have as much ice as you possibly can because not only is it keeping the drink cold, it's actually stopping it from getting diluted and then the, the balance is all getting wrong and the proportions all going out of sync. You want to have lots of ice in there to keep it nice and cold and to keep it from diluting. And I'm going to simply top up with a nice premium tonic water all the way to the top. If you have some other kinds of tonic waters that you like uh, to use at home, um, Seedlip Spice works really nicely with a kind of an aromatic tonic, wa tonic water or kind of a Mediterranean style tonic. I'm just using the classic Indian tonic today. And there we are. Give it a bit of a stir or just a kind of gentle lift. Oh, maybe a few more ice cubes. I can never have too much ice. In the top there, perfect. And then we're gonna garnish our drink. And for our garnish today, we're gonna to be using a grapefruit zest. So a nice big pink grapefruit zest in there. Express the oils over the top, give it a bit of a squeeze, a bit of flair, and pop it in the front there. And there we go the Seedlip Spice 94 and Tonic Water. Cheers, everybody. Ah, delicious, really refreshing. And like I said, got that familiarity, right? Familiar kind of serve style, familiar occasion, 
Um, you know when to have this, you know when you kind of like to enjoy it. Again, you can enjoy it all, all throughout the day, but it's really, really nice just at the end of the day to kind of, you know, relax a bit, have a nice sip on a really refreshing, uh, delicious cocktail. Oh. Lovely. Right, so that is the Seedlip Signature Serve, the Seedlip and Tonic. You can use any one of the Seedlips you have there. Again, 50 millilitres of Seedlip into your highball, top it up with lots of ice, and then top it up with a nice premium tonic water. The same recipe applies for each of the Seedlips. Uh, again, it's the perfect way to introduce someone to Seedlip or to introduce yourself to it. Um, and it's just a really delicious, simple cocktail you can make at home. Uh, if you're making one with the Grove and you're using a tonic water, we recommend garnishing it with a nice big orange peel. Uh, and similarly, the Garden with tonic water, we like to gar garnish ours with a sugar snap pea. Uh, obviously not always available, um, but when you can, we'd recommend a sugar snap pea. Uh, if that's unavailable, a nice big sprig of uh, fresh mint will do the trick perfectly. Right, so we've got the signature serve from Seedlip. We're now gonna go for the signature serve from Acorn. And again, it's super simple. If anything, even more simple. We're going to be making the acorn spritz, the acorn bitter spritz. Now, a spritz is uh, probably one of the fastest growing uh, serve styles in terms of popularity. Um, if you, like me, can remember bars in the summer about six or seven years ago, uh, you probably you didn't see too many of the spritzes around, but every time you did, it caught your eye, it caught your attention, right? This big, beautiful, glowing orb of orange in the distance uh, brought over to a table, and it you know, feels suddenly kind of summery, something... Uh, celebratory, something going on. Well, the spritz is a classic drink from uh, decades and decades old. Um, and traditionally, as we said before, it's usually um, alcoholic. Well, now we're here to give you the perfect non-alcoholic spitter spritz to enjoy whenever you might be enjoying it. And again, it's the perfect drink to enjoy at the end of your working day. You want to switch off, you want to relax, you want to have that moment to kind of uh, mark the transition between work and play and, and day into night, that kind of golden hour at the end of the day, the aperitivo hour, uh, where you really want to kind of, you know, switch off and relax and have something delicious, perhaps share it with someone you live with, have one cheers over Zoom with a friend. Uh, it's a great trend, like, drink to have in that kind of transitionary period. And so we're going to be using acorn bitter in ours, uh, our favourite of the acorns. Um, uh, it's really perfect in the spritz, lends itself so nicely. And as I said, the drink itself couldn't be easier. In fact, it's as easy as A, B, C. So we've got A for acorn, a nice big 50 milliliter measure inside our wine glass. Try not to get too much on the table, <laughs> if you can avoid it. And then fill it up again with plenty, plenty of ice. If you want this drink to be nice and cold and refreshing. There we are, lovely. So we've got A for acorn and we've got B for bubbles. Uh, so the bubbles that I'm using is uh, an Italian blood orange soda water. It works so perfectly with the complex citrus notes from, uh, from, from the acorn bitter and with the bitterness as well. If you don't have the luxury of, a, of, a, of an Italian blood orange soda, um, soda water works perfectly well, uh, as well as kind of fizzy water from a soda stream uh, or whatever you might have. Something bubbly, something effervescent, something light to kind of open up those flavours and awaken it and give it kind of the spritz uh, that the name calls for. So you want to top it up in here, all the way up. Nice big amount of bubbles. And give it a nice stir just to make sure all of the liquids are incorporated together. And so at this point we've got our A for acorn, our B for bubbles, now it's C for citrus. Simple as that. A nice citrus garnish. We'd recommend a nice big orange slice for your acorn spritz. Pop it in the front there, and there we go. There you have it, the acorn spritz. Couldn't be easier, but it's super, super delicious. Really, really nice drinks to have. Again, as I say, at the end of the day, uh, kind of when you're, you need that kind of signal, especially if you're working from home, you need to kind of remind yourself, switch off from work, switch on to relaxing, even if you happen to be in the same room, sitting at the same, in, in the same chair as before, you wanna have that moment to, to relax. So there you are. Cheers, everybody, to the acorn spritz. Oh, beautiful colour to it as well, right? I mean, non-alcoholic drinks, five or so years ago before Seelip came along, um, not only did they taste pretty poor, but they looked pretty lame as well. And that is a big thing, right? Especially, you know, soon we're hopefully going to be able to go out and, and have drinks outside in the real world again. Um, 
there's nothing worse if you're not drinking. Everyone else is having a glass of champagne or a martini and you're standing there with a glass of Coca-Cola or an orange juice. It's so a drink off the, off the kids' menu. You're not, you're not going to be proud to be drinking it. Um, so no fear when you're in a bar now. You can look out for Cedar and Acorn and, and order something uh, grown up and, and good looking as well. And it can be in all the Instagram photos. Delicious. Right, I'm going to pop that down here. Now we're going to take it up at a bit of a level. We've had our two signature serves, which again, super easy. Uh, once you've got those measurements in place, you know how to do it forever. Um, but it's all about getting those proportions right to begin with and enjoying um, these liquids uh, in our kind of signature serve styles. But now we're going to make some proper cocktails. We're going to make a bit of a bit of, bit of a noise uh, and using a few different kind of moving parts. Um, uh, and they're going to be, you know, still really simple, but they're going to take a bit more, take a bit more work um, and they're going to be even more delicious, I reckon. Um, and so the cocktail we're going to start with today is, um, I have to say, it's my favourite non-alcoholic cocktail. Uh, and I mentioned earlier on that we're on a bit of a mission of uh, changing the way the world drinks. Well, that's one of our missions. One of our kind of secondary missions, let's call it, is, uh, again, quite big, quite, quite, quite out there. Um, and it's one that we've kind of given ourselves recently. We have a mission to make this drink the world's most famous non-alcoholic cocktail. Easy, right? I don't know, what's our competition? Virgin Mojito, something like that? Something boring. Uh, so we're gonna make the Negroni. So the non-alcoholic Negroni. One of the, again, one of the most popular cocktails uh, in the world. It's growing in popularity every year. People are coming around to it. People are being kind of born into this idea of this beautiful, bitter Italian aperitivo cocktail, um, which traditionally is just loads of booze. It's booze on booze on booze, some ice and an orange. And there you go. Well, um, fortunately, we're here uh, to give you the non-alcoholic equivalent. So the no-groni is what we're going to make here. It's, again, a perfect aperitivo, something really delicious to have, perhaps before a big dinner, uh, where you, again, want to awaken the appetite, the juice is flowing for a nice big dinner. And we love it because it's how Acorn and Seedlip uh, shows up playing together in the best way possible. Uh, so, yeah, we're on a mission uh, to make it the world's most famous non-alcoholic cocktail. You can join us on that mission. You can tell all your friends. Uh, tell everyone you know about how good the, the no groni really is uh, and I'm going to show you how to make it and again it couldn't be simpler it's a really kind of complex and delicious and deep tasting cocktail but with a really simple recipe behind it which is great and so for this drink we're going to be using a rocks glass or just kind of a nice squat um, straight sided glass uh, and we're going to start with our spirit oh no actually before the spirit we're going to start with the ice I think better, better to start with the ice this time just to get it all in there. So again, lots and lots of ice straight into your glass. As much ice as you can. All the way to the top, perfect. Look at that. Oh, no, thought it was, no such thing as too much ice. Fantastic, right, and we're gonna take our seed lip as our base. So our seed lip uh, spice 94, again, is gonna form the spirit base of the Negroni. And this time we're going to be using 25 milliliters. So 25 milliliters or half of the measure that you were using before. So half an egg cup, half a thimble, whatever it might be. Um, I'm going to pop it straight over the ice in there. And then we're going to add acorn bitter. So we're going back to our bitter again. And this time, once again, 25 milliliters. You can see a, a theme starting here, I think. So 25 milliliters of Seedlip Spice 94. 25 milliliters of acorn bitter and then the last ingredient is acorn aromatic so that really kind of rich smoky velvety uh, flavor that i was talking about early on is going to top it all off here and once again you guessed it 25 milliliters is all you need in there over the ice beautiful so now if you guys are familiar with the negroni the alcoholic version you can already see it taking shape here it's got that beautiful ruby red color uh, really simple, but de uh, decadent, elegant drink. We're going to give it a bit of a stir. So with our bar spoon, teaspoon, uh, chopsticks held together with a rubber band, whatever you might have to hand. Um, just a little bit of a stir. And again, if you were making a Negroni, you'd be stirring to not only mix the uh, liquids together and cool it down, but to dilute some of the alcohol. We don't have to worry about that, so we don't need to stir it for quite as long. So just a little stir for a couple of seconds. Your ice might have gone down a little bit, so top it up again here. And if you want a garnish, again, nice and simple, keeping things easy, keeping them traditional uh, and looking good as well, a nice orange slice to pop in there. 
And there you have it, as easy as that, the No Groni, soon to be the world's most famous non-alcoholic cocktail. Once again, equal parts, Seedlip Spice 94, Acorn Bitter, Acorn Aromatic. Over ice, in a rocks glass, a quick stir around, and garnished with an orange. And there it is, in all its glory, the No Groni. Cheers, everybody. Delicious. Cheers. I'm going to enjoy this for a little bit longer. I hope you don't mind. I hope you are too. Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> right, okay. So we're going to make our, our final cocktail uh, today. It's, um, again, another cocktail that I love. It's up there definitely with one of our most popular. Um, and again, it's another non-alcoholic reiteration of a classic. But this time a bit more of a contemporary classic. So you've got the classics that are hundreds of years old and you know have, have stayed in their way for, for, for decades and have been passed down through bartenders over the years. Well, we've got a contemporary classic which again is becoming fast becoming one of the most popular and ubiquitous cocktails certainly in this country and, and, and around the world um, and it's uh, we are making the espresso martino. The clue earlier on with the coffee a lot of you probably guessed it we are making the Espresso Martino, which is of course the non-alcoholic version of the world-famous Espresso Martini, invented by the late great Dick Bradsall up in Notting Hill. Um, and so for this, again, a few more moving parts. So I'm going to get my strainers. I'm going to get my cocktail shaker. Set it out. And then we're going to use uh, just a few simple ingredients again, so the coffee and the something sweet. So whether that's a sugar syrup that you've made, um, whether it's uh, honey or, in my case, excuse me, an agave syrup. Um, and so in our cocktail shaker, in fact, oh, sorry, the glass as well, um, we're going to be using a, of course, a martini glass. If you don't have a martini glass, not to worry, anything that's kind of a, a stemware for anything that's got uh, a nice stem to hold on to, it might be a champagne glass, it might be a wine glass, whatever you, you have to hand or work. As long as it's got uh, the stem to hold on to, and the idea behind that is because we, uh, we aren't using any ice in the cocktail itself. So we don't want to be having to hold the glass and warming it up with our fingers. We want to be able to keep our fingers as far away from the drink as possible so that the liquid stays nice and cold and delicious. Cool. So we've got all that, we're ready to go. Um, so again, we're going to be starting with our Seedlip Spice 94, which again works so perfectly here. It complements the coffee flavours with those lovely kind of earthy, woody, woody um, tastes. And we are using this time a nice big double measure. So 50 millilitres of seedlip spice going in there. And then we're going to use the same um, measure again, this time of coffee. So 50 millilitres, in it goes. So when it comes to making the coffee, you want to kind of make it, uh, brew it on the stronger side. So if you're brewing your coffee from, from ground coffee or, or instant coffee, just uh, probably a bit stronger than you'd normally have it. Don't add anything else to it. Um, if you've got an espresso machine, fantastic. A nice double shot of espresso will do the trick. If you're making it uh, on, on a stove top, just again, make sure it's nice and um, nice and strong and concentrated. Another great option is buying a nice iced coffee. Uh, usually they're kind of on the stronger side anyway. Um, so a perfect, uh, really quick, easy option. Just pop in um, 50 millilitres from a nice can of iced coffee as well. And then we're going to add in our something sweet. So, so far we've got 50 millilitres of seedlip spice, 50 millilitres of espresso or coffee, and then we're going to just pop in uh, 15 millilitres of our something sweet. So 15 of sugar, of honey, maple syrup, um, or agave syrup in this case. So 15 or 1,5 millilitres. In it goes. Gosh. Watching it all go in. There we are. Lovely, perfect. Right now, this is where again moving parts really start moving. Um, might make a bit of a noise. Hopefully, won't make a bit of a mess. Um, but we're going to add. Um, we're going to start shaking things up. And so, before we add any ice to our shaker, a little trick um, just to kind of help blend your liquids and also to make the cocktail look really good as well is if you give it a shake first in the cocktail shaker without any ice. So. Without any ice in there, you might have been in the bar one time and seen bartenders shaking a cocktail shaker and no sound coming from it. Don't worry, they haven't just lost it and have forgotten to put any ice in there. There's a, there's a reason for it. 
it kind of emulsifies the liquids together and also adds air into the liquid. So it gets it nice and nice and sort of foamy, gives it a really delicious texture. You give it a nice hard shake without any ice for about five seconds. Careful not to spill anything anywhere. There's no ice in there, so it doesn't quite seal as well. But you can hear it already emulsifying nicely. Yeah, lovely. So a nice, beautiful kind of foamy consistency. And now this is where we're going to make the noise. So we're going to add ice into our shaker. So fill one side of the shaker with lots of ice. There we go, and a nice hard shake, again, for a couple of seconds. Um, just a warning, if you've got your headphones on, this might be a bit loud, um, so just turn it down uh, for a couple of seconds while, I, while I'm shaking this cocktail. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Oof. Wasn't too bad. There we go, lovely. Right, it should be a lovely, beautiful, can you just about see that? Yeah, lovely, foamy consistency on the top there. That's going to look absolutely beautiful in our glass. So get our strainer, or whatever you might have, just to block the ice coming out. You know, a nice pour into our glass. Look at that. Delicious. Beautiful, like a pillow, almost like marshmallow. Great consistency. Lovely. And then to garnish this, if you have espresso beans in the house, fantastic. This is what they're for, uh, not just for making coffee. Um, so we want to pop three espresso beans, float it on the foam. The real deal here. Look at that. Beautiful. And there you have it. The espresso martino, the non-alcoholic version of the contemporary classic. Again, a cocktail to enjoy perhaps after dinner as, instead of an espresso or on a coffee. Uh, or just a really fancy way to uh, liven up your, your morning coffee. Have yourself an espresso martino uh, before work or on a Zoom call with work uh, first thing in the morning. And you'll be right as rain. So there we are. Cheers, everybody. This is the espresso martino. Oh, delicious. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, that's the end of the class today. So we've covered four um, classic cocktails from Seedlip and Acorn. We've had the um, Seedlip Spice and Tonic to start us off with, the Acorn Bitter Spritz, the No Groni, uh, and then finally the Espresso Martino. So four really beautiful, really delicious, simple, non-alcoholic cocktails for you guys to make at home. Uh, again, if you've missed anything or if I've gone too fast, don't worry, we're going to get the uh, recipes out to you. Uh, and I do hope to see you again for a masterclass in the future. Until then, cheers everybody, enjoy the cocktails. Bye bye. <laughs>